Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday, Monday of Thanksgiving week, Monday of the last week of ordinary time, too. So here we are getting ready for Thanksgiving, but also Advent it is right around the corner, all kinds of things. So we'll have coffee as usual on the usual days this week, which means not on Thursday and Friday, which is fantastic. It's like the perfect week for that. We'll come back for one last day of the year of grace 2022 and then begin Advent on Sunday and so on. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. Coffee's going to be a little bit short today. We have a funeral coming up just at 10 o'clock. So on this wonderful, again, beautiful blue sky, clear, cold day will begin. But hey, snow is back in the forecast for Wednesday. This is nice. Keep up the prayers for snow. Keep it up. Don't, don't let it go. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. They were singing what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and the lamb. On their lips is no deceit has been found. They are unblemished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Alleluia, alleluia. 
stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest, for those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has offered her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, short readings today. The gospel is a fun one, especially for a Monday, because um, <clears throat> that's kind of one of the things that we do on Mondays. We, we, we go through the collection from the weekend. That's, that's part of the, what we do on the week. Anyway, just a fun little reminder to always be appreciative, especially of the small gifts. Truly, we're appreciative of all the gifts. But getting to kind of the meat of what I want to talk about today, um, we've been reading through the book of Revelation, and I've been doing this frame of how, you know, God loves us through it. And I don't want to really do that today too much, other than merely to say, this thing of being marked on the forehead is, is, is like yet another kind of like weird image from Revelation. But... It's also something which has a great deal of consolation because then it's a certain thing. And that's what the whole revelation kind of thing is about. Tomorrow, we're gonna to hear about um, how it is time to bring it all together. <laughs> kind of, it's time now to wrap this up. And um, in that, there is this, this strange thing of, of the marking of the foreheads. It's um, kind of an act of the continuing glory and how that promise of Christ is fulfilled. That is to say, all those things I was talking about yesterday in church, that presence of Christ is being made manifest on the person in a visible way. Now, today we celebrate a feast that I really, really like, which is among it, the kind of the liturgical texts that go along it. Is kind of very, kind of very small, and um, I have to admit, yesterday when I was kind of prepping my mind for the feast day today, I was thinking it's an actual feast. No, it's just a memorial in terms of the rank of these things, and that's just kind of how it is. It's the feast of the presentation of Mary in the temple. So, as we always do, like when we talk about these things having to do with the backstory with Mary. Where do you find this thing? It's in the pseudo gospel, the proto gospel of James. So remember, this is that weird book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly kind of pull it up and go to that part of the text that is about the presentation. Okay, so it's that weird text that um, is about the childhood of Mary, essentially. And it's weird because it's kind of like a gospel, but it's not really. And um, it has this whole other thing. It's just this very, very short document. Okay, so I'm going to read from it. And her parents went marveling and praising the Lord God because the child had not turned back. So there's this thing where, like, if she goes, then she will go to the temple. But if she turns back, then she'll be with the parents. <clears throat> the child was two years old, and Joachim said, two. Let us take her up to the temple of the Lord, that we may pay the vow that we have vowed, lest perchance the Lord send to us and our offering not be received. And Anna said, let us wait for the third year. <laughs> in order that the child may not seek for father and mother. That is to say that the child will walk on her own. And Joachim said, so let us wait. <laughs> and the child was three years old. And Joachim said, invite the daughters of the Hebrews that are undefiled and let them each take a lamp and let them stand with the lamps burning. 
oh yes, that sounds like the gospels with the wise and prudent virgins, that the child may not turn back and her heart be captivated from the temple of the Lord. Interesting. When we think of that parable of the, of the wise virgins, we don't think about the lamps being captivating. But it's, you know, part of the history here. And they did so until they went up to the temple of the Lord and the priest received her and kissed her and blessed her saying something which sounds very much like somewhere else in the gospel. The Lord has magnified your name in all generations. <laughs> so Mary later on says, the Lord has magnified me among all generations will call me blessed. This is her Magnificat. In you on the last of days, the Lord will manifest his redemption to the sons of Israel. And he set her down upon the third step of the altar and the Lord God sent grace upon her and she danced with her feet <laughs> and all the house of Israel loved her. That's the story of the presentation. It's really cute. She danced with her feet <laughs> on the third step of the altar. So <clears throat> it, it's, a, it's a funny text and, and it really is just, you know, darling like that. But it also has this very serious, wonderful recapitulation of another story. So remember the names of those parents involved, Joachim and Anne. Very clear, very clear parallel to Samuel, whose mother's name was Anne, who then also like, so Elkanah and Hannah, or the parents of Samuel. And Anna was um, very much desiring to have a child at some point, and she was already getting advanced in years. Very similar to the story of Joachim and Anne, especially as presented in the Proto-Gospel of James, which is where we get all these stories from. Now, that's all well and good, but obviously that parallel doesn't just end there of like, aha, there's a child. Well, Samuel, what does he do? Well, his function, his function, his job is a pretty serious one. He's the one who anoints the king, the first one, Saul, and then the better one, David. And he's the one who ushers in, who brings in this whole idea of kingship, which is pretty critical to the idea also of the Messiah. So instead of Samuel the prophet and therefore coming the kingdom, we have Mary, who is the sum of so many prophecies. And we're gonna be going through a lot of that in Isaiah coming up like really soon, like next week, because Advent and all that of the virgin shall conceive and bear a child and so on, he shall name him Emmanuel. Those things, which are very much Mary herself, leading from that history and life of prophecy and kind of Zechariah is wrapped up in this as well and John the Baptist and the rest of the family to Christ and his kingship. Now, it's not just the kind of fulfillment of the promise, which it is, but also a couple other things too. And here's where the presentation of the temple kind of becomes more than just a story about a cute little girl dancing with her feet on the third step of the of the altar, which is in the temple, Mary learns a number of things that she really couldn't get anywhere else. First of all, aside from that history of the Immaculate Conception and how Mary, who is the mother of God, has already within her a lot of qualities which are pretty tremendous and exemplary, which is more holy, Mary or the temple? That's kind of one of those questions of like how many angels? But the, the thing is that as a human being, which she is, she gets to be in that place where the holies are. And I say that plural, in the sense that not just the holies, the presence of God in that room in the temple, but all the holy things, the prayer, the sacrifice, also the care for the holy items, the, the things which are not just things in general, but things specific, things like, for example, how to weave. Now, this may seem a little silly, but whenever, like in the Passion of the Lord, we come to that point about the, like in the Passion of John specifically, of, of the guards not wanting to tear the Lord's garment, remember, which is, you know, 
woven without a seam from head to toe, that kind of weaving is very much temple weaving. It's a very special kind of art and it's not an easy one. But that's exactly the kind of thing that Mary would have learned in the temple. Now, it doesn't say in the gospel that this seamless garment was given to the Lord by Mary, but it does have that nice consonance, especially since also like in the history of the priests of Israel, those kinds of things, remember the priests were priestly families, generation to generation, part of the tribe, you know, um, they were handed on from like the mother to the son, especially that kind of relationship is a very important one. And so it does have that really nice thing about it. And so this is also how that priestliness of Christ, especially in the items that go along with it, is shown, is, is presented. And it happens because Mary has this long experience of being a child and dancing, but also other things and learning how to pray and other things in the temple. The presence of the temple is a really beautiful thing. Now in our lives, we have churches, we have our churches and the kind of like the amount of care that we take for keeping everything good and right is one part of the things that we do with the church. But the other thing is how we are edified by it. So we have, uh, of course, the habit of you know, going to church, of being there, being present to God. And again, all those other things I was talking about yesterday. But there's also that part which forms us. Because being in the presence of the things, like the items, also really does affect us. And it teaches us something, not just in kind of an intellectual way, but certainly in a way of the soul. And as people who attend to these things frequently, it's easy to just like kind of let it fall into habit, but it's not. It's actually a very active attention day in, day out, and also night by night, kind of constantly. And this is the same kind of education that remember Samuel had there at the foot of Eli, and then also Mary, but also is very much available to all of us which is of course another reason why it's such a great blessing to be able to keep our churches open and have them available that people may go and pray and not just pray, but also be in the presence of the kind of the artifacts that are part of the rituals and the rest of it, because it really does in fact affect us. In a nice way, I think that the Feast of the Presentation of Mary is very much the feast of why it matters to like keep altar cloths clean and to do all those little bits and pieces that we do, like making sure the candles are just right and keeping things tidy and not just tidy, but decorous and really worthy and for the presence of God and his holy people. It's a lovely day to celebrate, in fact, I think the church. Anyway, that's quickly what I wanted to say. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, may the Lord preserve them, give them life, make them blessed upon the earth and protect them from the will of those who wish them harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Catholic Church, that all may be able to worship freely without fear of prosecution, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, that we remember to see Christ in others by caring for the needy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we continue to grow in the love that Mary, our Holy Mother, has for her son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And for whom and what else shall we pray? Through the intercession of St. Monica, for our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down in you and remain with you forever. Amen. One last little thing. In the Proto-Gospel of James, the very next paragraph talks about how Mary was in charge of weaving the scarlet for the veil of the temple. Just another one of those really cool little details. Anyway, <clears throat> let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Everyone have a lovely Monday and thank you to all the people who work to keep the church such a wonderful place. All right, God bless you all and we'll see you again tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.